GameStop's been around since 1984 when it was known as Charles Babbage's, but nobody gave a monkey's nutsack about it till it became Funko Land in the 90s. And ever since then, the store's been most people's go-to when buying video games for better or worse. But with each passing year in recent memory, their profits and stocks have been dropping faster than a cheetah's ass. Many industry analysts such as Marcus Bagwell and John Travolta think that this is because of the digital market growing more and more each year. But while that may be the biggest reason for the decline, the reality is that there's a lot more to it than that. So grab a snow cone, release your dad's animals into the wild just to see his reaction, press the subscribe button if you haven't already, and allow me, the future director of Time Cop 3, Cameron, to tell you why GameStop's going out of business and what could be done to prevent it or at least prolong its life. <laughs> It's been a long time since I talked about GameStop, and those of you who are badass enough to have been watching my videos for a while are probably well aware that I'm not very fond of the company. They lectured my mom about buying Mortal Kombat for her kids to the point where she cried in the Funko Land days. They refuse accepting returns on open games despite the fact that most of the new games they sell have in fact been opened. And one time they even put my pre-order down for a digital copy and refused to refund me after I already paid for it. There's plenty of other atrocities that I can and will mention before the video's over, but this is live TV and my producer is telling me that we don't have the time to go over everything right now. Come on, you piece of shit, let's go! We're live! So if you ask me, the main reason why GameStop's failing has less to do with the growing digital market and more to do with the fact that GameStop just plain sucks and everybody knows it. But despite how much I've always personally hated visiting the store, I still don't want them to go out of business. Because at worst, it'd be bad for the gaming industry, and at best, the industry would be unaffected, but thousands of people would lose their jobs. And despite all the bad experiences I've had with GameStop due to their corporate policies, not everybody who works there is terrible. Some of the employees are actually pretty cool, especially Lonnie, but some would argue that the employees would actually be better off if the company bit the big one since most of them hate working there according to the countless YouTube videos and Reddit posts by former employees. Although, I tend to fall into the camp of people who think that everybody involved would be better off if GameStop just started treating their employees better. I know, I know, it's a crazy concept, but I honestly believe that an unhappy staff hurts the company, hence another reason why we're here to Today talking about why they're doomed. Because not only are unhappy employees demotivated, but they're also irritable, which is never good for customer service. Especially when you combine that with corporate policies like making your unhappy staff lie to customers about not having new games in stock just to push used copies instead. I know the company makes most of its money off of used games, but short-term profits are never worth sacrificing goodwill with a customer. And since I've never actually worked there, I couldn't tell you that I've seen this firsthand. But I do see employees pushing used copies onto people who are trying to buy new games pretty much every time I've ever been in there. You could see this as them trying to save money for the customers. But even though the customer may save like five bucks, it just comes off as sketchy to be such a fiend about it. Not to mention that the developers who work on these games don't see any of the profit from pre-owned sales, which may or may not have caused a lot of them to go out of business. And that only fuels the argument that gaming should just go completely digital. But while I usually prefer digital media, video games are the one medium where I'll always prefer physical. And even if you hate physical, it's always a positive for the consumer to have the ability to borrow, resell, or even trade in games. But when GameStop acts as the worst middleman ever for trade-ins, it doesn't help the customer. It just hurts everybody involved, including GameStop themselves. In fact, one could even argue that part of the reason why the digital sales market's growing is because of GameStop shenanigans. After all, GameStop doesn't even exist in Japan, and the physical sales there are still pretty strong. And look, at the end of the day, if customers are agreeing to exchange their games for crumbs, then you could blame people for getting ripped off rather than the business. But in the age of the internet, word spreads around pretty easily, and taking advantage of ill-informed customers just kind of makes you look like a dick. And it doesn't help your cause when you open new copies of Xenoblade Chronicles just so you can call them pre-owned and sell them for the aftermarket price at $90. And it it also wasn't a very good look to bundle Nintendo's Classic Edition consoles while they were still scarce with trash they had lying around at the warehouse. If they at least made the entire deal cheaper than buying everything separately, then this wouldn't have been that bad. But nope, GameStop's subsidiary ThinkGeek was literally holding mini consoles hostage and forcing people to buy garbage just to get a hold of something they actually wanted. As far as the trade-ins go, there have been a few good deals over the years. But for the most part, it was always just a much better idea to sell your games on eBay. And I think more and more people have been realizing that thanks to all the memes making fun of GameStop's shadiness. Offering customers better deals may lead to less profit per transaction, but I'm certain that it'd lead to more trade-ins in the long run and keep people coming in. Especially if the company wasn't so dumb about how they sell retro games. 
Currently, GameStop only lets you buy older games via stock photos and text, which often leads to terrible labels or even fake cartridges since the average GameStop employee has no idea how to spot one. And it certainly doesn't help that the prices are for some reason higher than eBay. But even if the prices were an ass hair cheaper, I'd still prefer to know what the item I'm buying looks like. And what if you buy a Nintendo 64? Does it come with an expansion pack? Seeing as how they don't even know how to spot a fake cartridge, my guess is that it's a coin toss. But they should either provide more details or just sell these in actual stores. The argument to why they only sell retro stuff online is the exact same argument they used as to why they open their new games. And that's because the stores are apparently too small to carry everything. But I'm calling horse duty on that because there's tons of retro gaming stores throughout the US that also carry new games. And if you can't figure out how to fit everything into one store, then just look at Japan for inspiration. Because it can be done, and seeing these games in brick and mortar stores would be a lot more tempting for the average consumer to make a nostalgia fueled impulse buy. But nah, GameStop would rather just hoard these games and even destroy them sometimes for whatever reason. Which is yet another monstrosity that I'm going to use against them in court. Because as if retro games weren't expensive enough as it is, destroying the limited supply is only going to make things worse. And the lamest part about that is that it's not even going to make GameStop any extra money. So not only are they being dicks for money, but it appear that they like being dicks for no reason at all. And unfortunately, it just might be too late for them to change how people perceive the company. But even so, I still think their best bet for survival is to try anyway. Because with the popularity of digital games increasing more and more every year, making customers not want to avoid going to your store certainly wouldn't hurt. But even beyond that, I think turning into a competent retro gaming store would be a good idea too. After all, that market's probably not going anywhere anytime soon. And since GameStop's bread and butter's always been used games anyway, it just makes sense for them to try to be the kings of that market. At the very least, they should probably at least look into selling something else. Because while retailers like Kmart, Circuit City, and Caldors make a lot of money off video games, they also sell a lot of other stuff too, so it's really just more convenient to buy everything in one place. While I do think it's possible for GameStop to turn things around, there's really not a lot of margin for error. And given their abysmal track record of the supposed power they're offering to the players, it's gonna be way more of an uphill battle than it needs to be. And I think their high turnover rate of CEOs proves that. Thankfully, though, we'll still be able to buy physical games at other retailers and even the internet in the meantime, though. But it looks like stores dedicated to selling video games are destined to be less and less common as time goes on. At least if they don't broaden their horizons and offer a little bit more. But even if they became a successful retro store, with people becoming more and more accepting of mandatory day one patches, games past the sixth generation will eventually be paperweights when they stop receiving online support. Which is just gonna make inventory for classic games harder and harder to come by. No matter how you slice it, though, I don't see GameStop lasting much longer unless they make some serious changes ASAP since most people won't miss their shenanigans anyway. But I'll tell you two people whose shenanigans everybody loves are today's patrons of the day, Dojin Shinji and Austin Garcia. Or if you'd rather show support by picking a shirt or mug up, then send pictures of videos of you rocking it to make a cameo like these badasses right here. What do you think about GameStop's future, though? Do you think they can survive if they make drastic changes? Is there literally nothing they can do? Or do you even care at all? Either way, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll try my goddamnedest to respond to everybody. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to see more videos like this. And if you want to help this channel grow, then simply liking and sharing goes a long way. My name's Cameron, and I'll see you next time. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty, thank you for your support.